How fun is this? Purple instant mashed potato powder. Hey guys, welcome back to Eden Sparrow Homestead. My name is Kelsey and today I'm taking you along as I work in the kitchen. I've got some preserving to do. Right behind me is what we're working with. All of these lovely potatoes that have been covering our dining room table for a few weeks now. It's been a hot minute since we've sat and had a meal here and I would love to get it cleared off. So we're gonna be canning and freeze drying and probably freezing some as well. So let's just get started. If you didn't catch my last video where I'm harvesting most of these potatoes, I will link that in the description below. Go check that out. I harvested almost 150 pounds from our little quarter acre homestead and you can learn a little bit on how I did that. But first, before we get started, the most important step is coffee. So I am just going to keep peeling, rinsing, chopping, throwing in water until I have enough to uh, do a full load in my pressure canner. I have to check and see how many pounds that is, but I'm gonna go grab all the potatoes and get to work. Okay, so I pulled out my ball canning book. This is the complete book of home preservation. I really recommend this if you are new to canning. Um, it's really helpful, great instructions, all safe recipes. Um, I'll link it in the description below. But I went in and it says about two to three pounds of potatoes per quart jar. And my canner holds seven quart jars, so anywhere from 14 to 21 pounds. So I gathered 18 pounds here on the table. And the dining room table doesn't even look like a dent was made. <laughs> so I'll be here till further notice. Okay, so a little bit of an update. Today did not go as planned. It is already um, nearly eight o'clock at night. And um, I'm still working on getting that original 18 pounds of potatoes chopped up. They're all peeled. They're not fully chopped, I'm getting there. And I'm about to get them on the stovetop to boil before I can start the actual canning process. Um, I just, I had two little ones today. My kiddos needed me and that's okay, that's life. I am rolling with it, trying to at least finish this one task so I can cross something off the list and here's hoping I am not up until midnight. So potatoes are a low acid food and that means you are required to pressure can them. So I have my pressure canner ready to go. I am filling up these jars with the recommended amount of salt and then filling them up with the potatoes. The required amount of headspace for potatoes is one inch. Headspacing is really quite important when you are canning. It's going to ensure that your jars seal properly. So when you're canning, make sure to pay attention to the headspace. Now I'm just adding in the boiled water and then I am gonna go ahead and get all of the air bubbles removed from these jars. That will affect your headspace. So once you have them removed, go back and check the headspace again. So 
So I know there's a lot of fear surrounding pressure canning. People have heard the horror stories, and I will say they are pretty rare. I don't think that you should fear it. I think you should maintain a certain level of respect because it can potentially be dangerous if not operated properly. So all you have to do is read your instruction manual, triple check all of your safety measures, and you'll be just fine. After the lid is on, you bring the whole canner up to a boil and you wait for a steady stream of steam that will vent for 10 minutes before then adding the weight, which you'll see here. Once that weight is on, the pressure in the canner will rise. Once the proper amount of pressure has been reached, the weight is going to start to jiggle. You want to then adjust your temperature on the burner to maintain one to four jiggles per minute. At that first jiggle, you can start the timer for the processing time. I am using an All-American 921 model pressure canner. If you would like a more detailed pressure canning tutorial, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do that. Okay, so it's the next morning. I was not up until midnight. Still up pretty late, but today's a new day and I figured for a quick win, just to make it look like I made a little bit more of a dent in these potatoes, I am gonna pick out the nicest, biggest ones to keep for fresh eating over the next few months. Um, and that way I can clear at least a little bit of room on the table. So it doesn't look so overwhelming because it still looks really overwhelming to me. All right, so I took the biggest potatoes, put them on the bottom, stuffed in some packing paper to separate them, and then just threw a few of the medium-sized potatoes. Um, so this will be our fresh eating box. When freezing a lot of vegetables, blanching is required. There's an enzyme present that will continue the decaying process in produce and freezing does not kill that enzyme off, but boiling water does. So the blanching process is usually just submerging the produce in boiling water. I think somewhere between one to three minutes, it depends on what you are doing, and then submerging them into cold water. Okay, so this is where I'm at. I have all the potatoes I want canned, canned. I have what I want frozen in cubes or whole, frozen. And I am starting on shredding the remainder of the potatoes. And I ended up actually making a big batch of potato leek soup. I had some leeks in the garden that were ready for harvesting. So I figured I would make that for dinner tonight and then also make a double batch and freeze dry the rest. So we're gonna see how that turns out. And I'm doing two trays of that in the freeze dryer and then two trays of the shredded potatoes. And then finally, I will have just a batch of purple potatoes that I'm going to make into a mashed potato powder in the freeze dryer.
So I decided to rinse them a few times. Um, this is the second rinse, just to get rid of some of that starchiness. I find they fry up a lot better if you do this. They get crispier. Um, so I'm doing this, then I'm going to blanch them in boiling water for about two to three minutes, um, strain them through a colander, and then I'm going to lay them out on some towels to get rid of the excess water, and then into the freeze dryer. There you go. Okay, you guys, it's the next day. I hear my freeze dryer beeping downstairs, so that means it's ready. We're gonna check on that potato leek soup, and if that's good to go, we're gonna get that out and get the mashed potatoes into the freeze dryer. All right, so let's check this out. Yeah, that's definitely done. I got the purple mashed potatoes all ready for the freeze dryer. And here is a look at the final product. I decided to run them through the food processor to uh, just get them a little bit smoother for the rehydration process. And the end result was honestly beautiful. Okay, how fun is this? Purple instant mashed potato powder. Um, I'm kind of geeking out over it. Uh, I rehydrated some. I just boiled some water, poured it over top until it got to a good consistency, and added a dollop of butter, and they taste awesome. So I'm super excited to have that on my pantry shelf, and it's gonna add some nice color, and the kids love purple mashed potatoes. All right, you guys, take a look at the final product here, all of my hard work finally finished all right so what we've got uh, I've got nine quart bags of frozen um, shredded hash browns and some new baby potatoes here I've got two freeze dryer bags of potato leek soup two freeze dryer bags of hash browns I've got this is about I'm gonna say 30 to 40 pounds of just uh, fresh potatoes that I'm gonna keep in storage. I've got this half gallon jar of purple instant mashed potatoes that we put in the freeze dryer and 26 quarts of canned cubed potatoes. All right, you guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Maybe you were inspired to try preserving your potatoes in a new way. This is really the tip of the iceberg. There's a ton of ways that you can preserve potatoes. So don't be afraid to try new things. Did you just wake up? Yeah. Bye-bye.
yeah, we're gonna say bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up, and we'll catch you in the next one, right? Bye-bye.